Happy Fife Farm. Hello and welcome to my unboxing and first look at a Warhammer Age of Sigmar giant, otherwise known as a Mega Gargant. I'm led to believe it's in this giant box right here. It will set you back a whopping £120. Can you believe it? It's the most expensive model Games Workshop now sell. It is pricier than two sprue techless at £105 and the absolutely stunning majestic Archaea model at £100. It's also more costly than a Necron Monolith and an Imperial Knight Castellan. So let's see what all of the fuss is about. I didn't want to collect giants at all. You guys twisted my arm. You want to see this? So this is because of you all. Uh, wanting to see these giants and to see what you get for your money. The kit allows you to build one of three different Mega Gargants. The Gatebreaker, which has got this cowl and he's holding a peasant with a mallet. Uh, the Kraken Eater, which has got this net full of people and a blunt instrument. And then also the War Stomper Mega Gargant, um, which is the thing that I'd probably go for. It's uh, very reminiscent of uh, Skyrim, I want to say. So without further ado, let's get into this giant unboxing. So first things first, we have a giant Necron Triarch Stalker. <laughs> this is an interesting one because uh, I ordered this and I never expected for one moment that it would come in a brand new 9th edition box. Here we are. They're slightly better in this ninth edition. We'll be doing an unboxing and review of the Stalker in the not too distant future, along with many other Necron models other than the new releases. So if you like Necrons or you've just started Necrons and you wanna and you'd like to see more of them, stay tuned. Got some nice uh, airbags. They're limited edition. They won't last for very long. Uh, oh, I've got some glues. We've got the Necron Hexmark Destroyer. Really looking forward to unbox this one. The video for this one will come out tomorrow. And then we've got a giant, oh, giant box in here. It's so big, it, I'll have to break the box to crack into it. If only they did a giant box breaker. There we go. Whoa, look at that big box. Incredible. I think it's a similar size box to Archeon. Let's do a box off size, shall we? And then we of course have got the Battle Tome, very skinny Battle Tome, not really a giant one. And uh, we'll be going through that today as well. Along with, Brand new packaged Man Crusher Gargants. So these were the kind of, I say original giants. These were the original uh, Gargants. They were only sold in like a set of one for I think about 40 pounds. And then Games Workshop have released this kit for 75. So you save a little bit of money, but um, it would have been nice if they were 70 or, or even 60 um, to sell some of the older uh, models in conjunction with this release. So there you go. That's uh, Sons of Bayamat today. Now, in terms of box offs, I don't normally do size comparison with boxes, but it's a, it's a little bit smaller than a Knight Desecrator. So it'll be, and that's the same size box as the uh, Castellan. Um, just like a tiny little bit. Hope you can see that. Compared to Archeon, it's bigger. It's a bigger box. Not a bigger model though, but it is a bigger box. And two sprue techless, definitely bigger than two sprue techless. So yeah, there you go. I don't normally do size comparison with boxes, but that just gives you an idea that it will be the biggest box uh, for Age of Sigma that you'll pick up um, for a single miniature in there. Let's have a closer look at this one and unbox it. So it says here, Age of Sigma, one Citadel miniature, Sons of Bayamat, Mega Gargan, and then you've got the Kraken Eater right there on the front cover. Um, uh, looks amazing. And then you've got the War Stomper on the back, along with the Gate Breaker. Oh, it's called a Fort Crusher Flail. There you go. 
and this is a Titanic Boulder Club, uh, a net full of stuff, and a shipwrecker club. Uh, even got part of a ship there. Awesome. Now, there's not one of these mega gargants or giants um, that I've kind of fallen in love with. No, that's the wrong word. Um, not one of them do I have an affinity with. Uh, the War Stomper looks all right, in my opinion. Uh, I like the Gatebreaker, but I'm not too fond of the, the cowl. I like that he's holding a little peasant there. Um, and the Kraken Eater, that's all right. Um, but it's just that pose with him sort of, yeah, moving, moving to the side there. Uh, I'm guessing you can change that because he's uh, moving forward and this one is, is moving the other, other direction. But um, yeah, the legs are gonna be very similar, if not the same with all of them. So without further ado, let's uh, unbox this. And uh, while I'm unboxing it, maybe I can go through some of my favorite giant quotes. Here's one of them. Oh, it is excellent to have a giant strength, but it is tyrannous to use it like a giant. Uh, full points to see who quote, whose quote that is from. But actually my favorite one of all is, uh, takes me back. A whiz popper, cried the BFG, beaming at her. Us giants is making whiz poppers all the time. Whiz popping is a sign of happiness. It is music in our ears. You surely is not telling me that a little whiz popping is forbidden among human beans? Oh, BFG, brilliant. Can't be a bit of roll dial. Okay, so this is the instruction guide and it's a giant one, obviously. Uh, there you go, you've got build variants. Oh, we've got a pink one now. Or is that a purple? It's more of a fuchsia. Um, so there's the Kraken Eater, uh, one to three, a War Stomper, four to six, and a Gate Breaker, seven to nine. We will be making the War Stomper this evening. I already made this decision. It was a tough decision. I'm not that indecisive. I'm quite confident in my decisions, but uh, I hope you appreciate this color coordination we've got. So the Kraken Eater has all of these kind of uh, interchangeable parts as blue, the War Stomp has them green, and then the Gatebreaker has a selection. Um, it has the War Stomper's feet and the left arm van brace uh, with the right arm of the Kraken Eater, and then the pink parts of uh, the Gatebreaker itself, um, and then the non colored parts, uh, the universal parts. So here we go. Uh, there's some images of some, uh, of some giant half naked men. And yep, he's definitely got the dad bod um, working for him. Uh, yeah, lots and lots of parts. It's incredible. Doesn't look nearly as many parts as uh, the uh, Silent King. Just putting it out there. And this is the War Stomper, which we'll be uh, building. I, I like the name of the Kraken Eater more than, more than the others. It's just the model. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have a look at the rules in the Sons of Bay map and uh, see what I can go for. I think I'd have to go for a War Stomper for Chaos, though. I've got a Slaves to Darkness army growing. Um, and there you go. And there's the gatekeep, Gatebreaker. And then there's the rules, uh, but you only get the rules for the Kraken Eater. I guess Games Workshop just want you to, to build that now. The rules for the others are most likely on the Warhammer Age of Sigmar app for free. So yeah, if only they could do that with uh, 40k, right? Here are all the sprues. So this is what you're paying your £120 for. It's technically three big sprues and one half a sprue. So it's not, so I guess it's four sprues, but yeah, size does matter. And in this case, look at that whopping base. Um, it's not as big as Archeon at all, or Techless. Those bases are bigger, so just putting that out there. Um, this is the smallest of the uh, sprues, so hopefully you can see that. Uh, you've got this uh, big um, blunt instrument there. You've got the flail, you've got the, the net. Um, there's a fair amount of detail on there. I think it might be better if I just put uh, some lighting on to see these parts. So yeah, you've got this uh, nice, I want to call it a gourd because I've been playing Ghost of Tsushima, but uh, still, you've got part of the tentacle of a kraken, so uh, maybe you could use that on something else. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you've got uh, yeah, like a makeshift fan brace there. Uh, it, it looks like it's panels of the door because there's a lock as well. Um, you've got some vials and skulls and some elongated skulls. Uh, maybe there's maybe they're child skulls. That would be a bit horrific, wouldn't it, for Games Workshop? Um, and then you've got uh, some fingers, some gnarled fingers with the uh, fingernails, which are actually in better shape than my own. <laughs> I jest. Oh, and then you've got some arrows, so you can put an arrow in one of their knees, maybe. You know, chop it off and stick it in one of their knees. It used to be a giant until I, yeah. 2012 want their uh, memes back. Anyway, moving on to the giant sprues, I guess. Well, they're all giant sprues. Um, but uh, you've got this uh, interesting arm with this armor. Uh, it looks like some, I want to say, mollusks with this uh, scaled hide that's wrapped around uh, his forearm. You've got a couple of uh, heads there. This one with a beard. There's a lot of detail on that one. And this one here. And there's some, yeah, lovely things happening at the bottom of their severed heads. Uh, so that's great attention to detail. As morbid and grotesque as, as it is, um, you've got uh, a horn there with some more skulls. You've got a, a sword uh, with a frost axe thing. <laughs> uh, you've got a raven. Maybe you could use that for something else. That's quite interesting. Yeah, that's cool. You've got a spear and uh, some kind of helmet with a blade on it. You've got another forearm. Uh, you've got this animal skull with some sharp teeth. You've got like a door or a shield. I think it's like a door thing. Maybe it's, um, reminds me of like uh, the sigils outside of uh, pubs. Um, you've got this iron hook thing, grappling hook. It's quite interesting. You've got this shield. That's definitely a shield there. Um, you've got another uh, lovely shield. I mean, I, get, I guess you could kitbash these to high heaven. But if you've got some spare parts for Lumineth, you could put a Lumineth shield on its belt, or if you've got some spare heads, or, you know, you could really, like, kind of um, buckaroo and put a load of different items from all of your other Age of Sigmar armies, I guess. Uh, you've got this. I'm not quite sure what that is. More, more hide, more scales for some kind of dragon creature, lizard creature. You've got the flail hammer thing holding that on the chain. You've got this knot. I don't know what quite what that is. I think you've got some uh, hands there and uh, a chaos shield. Kind of like spot the shield and name them. Really interesting kit that it has a mishmash of lots of other pieces and, uh, from other armies. Wow, and then you've got this. Look at those legs. Thick, thick. This is Kylo Ren thick, guys. Oh my. I wanted it to wobble then, this belly. Um, got proper beer belly on him uh, with the bell and some chunky thighs, some thunder thighs, and this uh, loin cloth, I think, or that covers his uh, behind. And then he's got his feet. Uh, notice uh, on here at least, he's only got four toes. Bless him. So he's missing a digit. I think this foot has only got three, and three on there as well. So. Oh dear. And then you've got this <laughs> peasant. Look at that. He's being grabbed by the head there. Oh, I think there's two of them. He's actually holding two of them. Oh, wow. Look at the articulation there on that hand with the finger. That's amazing. And the little face there. Oh, that, that is so cool. Oh, and then he's holding... I think this must be the other side of that hand. Um, they're screaming. Fee fi fo fum. And then we get this giant sprue. It's uh, it's huge. There's lots of detail in this one. This is the most detailed uh, sprue by far. There's so many things going on with this one. I don't really know where to start. You've got everything from the cowl there that, with the patchwork and the stitching. Uh, you've got the uh, jawbone of some kind of uh, sea creature with the teeth. And the teeth have uh, etched edges. Lovely bit of... Uh, detail there. It's a shame that I'm not going to be uh, using some of these parts. Uh, you know, you've got this corpse uh, that's like on a hook, a little bit like bait. That's uh, disgusting. Uh, you've got this thing, this club. Uh, you've got this big shield thing with a load of spears. 
And you've got one of the faces, I think that's the cowl face. You've got this uh, paddle, broken paddle from a rowboat. Gully man. And then you've got a, a shield there with some more skulls. And uh, you've got the net. There's loads of detail there. You can see the, the actual uh, braided uh, rope on there. And there's some uh, hooks and all kinds of things going on at the top. And then this is just a, a selection of, of creatures and things in this net. Uh, that looks like some kind of dolphin, maybe? I don't know. Uh, got bodies and hands and spears. It's the net of stuff. Uh, you've got this long part. You've got this long pike-looking type fish thing with part of the, uh, the boat with, again, some mollusks or whatever they are. You've got one of the uh, heads. You've got another one of the heads with a beard. I think that's a war stomper. You've got this uh, neck, this bit of cloth here for the neck. Um, you've got some kind of lantern thing. You've got these horns with uh, some fur. And the other part of the, uh, the boat. Well, uh, oh, you've got a random arm there for a peasant. And you got this thing, and that's the other part of the fish, very happy fish there. I think I've covered all of it. I think I've covered as, as all the parts that I possibly can. Um, it's a difficult one, guys. Is it worth 120? Oh, just on this face value. I still think it's too expensive. I really do. Uh, I think if they priced it at 90 or maybe at 100, then that would be be better. Obviously, it would be better. I think 120 is pushing it, um, especially if you want to to get an army of them. And you know, well, say an army. You know, if you wanted to get three, the three different variants, uh, then you're looking at 360 pounds. I don't know how many points they are until I uh, bust open the battle tome, but I'd like to do a comparison between uh, the cost of like a full, full army with lots of models and an army of these. Uh, I will do that in the review for you. Um, but there you go, that's my unboxing uh, and first look. It's not really a review because I, I haven't taken all the parts off and uh, glued it together. I will be doing that this evening in uh, this evening's uh, live stream from seven o'clock. Please come and join me and the members and the subscribers and all the other viewers. Uh, it'd be great to, uh, to see you there. And in my review, I will go through kind of how easy it was to build, uh, many issues I had, and whether it was fun, you know. Um, there's definitely a lot of parts there, more than techless. But the thing is, Archeon is such a lovely model, it's, it's so hard to, to beat that one in terms of the joy of uh, building it. I think that this model is a great canvas for you to kitbash and to add extra pieces to as well, but we'll see. Anyway, what do you guys think uh, so far of the Mega Gargant? Please do put your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. Jack Protects.